What's going on everybody and welcome to the second part of the Zipline Local tutorial mini-series for backtesting and doing finance with Python. In the last tutorial what we did was we just went through the arduous process of getting Zipline running on our machine, running through a simple just buy Apple strategy and we got to this point where we ran the strategy and we can see that it's making some output and no matter which way you run it you got we at least said the output should go to strat.pickle. So what do we do at this point? So at least now, if you run it via the magic here, you do get the output saved to this apparent data frame it creates this table that I'm telling you now is a data frame. Um, but, but this probably isn't exactly what you were hoping for. You probably want to see some sort of graph and you also probably want to know what you're working with. If we just use the scroll bar um, at some point, I thought we would hit it looks like we're actually seeing all the columns here, which is weird. Usually it cuts. Oh, no, no, okay, here it is. I just missed it. Yeah, there's other columns here that we're just not seeing. Uh, it's truncated it. So anyway, uh, what can we do? What can we visualize? What's here for us already? So uh, the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is um, basically I've already run this, so I'm just filming from the last part. So if you need to, make sure you load the extension, run the algorithm again, and all that. I'm just going to continue on down here. So what this did, at least in this, the way that we ran it this time, I still have one more way I'm going to show you guys how to run things, but uh, I just figure information overlo overload. Uh, so this saved our strategy output to strat.pickle. So what, what could we do? How could we read from this? Well, one option we have, uh, first of all, would be like, let's go ahead and import pandas as PD. And in fact, let me see without making this. I don't want to make it too crazy, but I want it to be legible. Uh, and then let me go ahead and make some more imports, put this up towards the middle. So we're going to import pandas as pd. Let's import matplotlib.pyplot as plt uh, from matplotlib. Let's go ahead and import style. And then we'll do a style.use ggplot because we all know in finance how beautiful your charts are makes a huge difference in your performance. So uh, the next thing we're going to say is I'm just going to say backtestdf equals pd. Uh, is it what is it read pickle read pickle and then specify the name of the pickle in my case we output to strat dot pickle so strat dot pickle so that reads in our data frame and then we could do something as simple as backtest underscore df dot uh, portfolio underscore value dot plot plt dot show Boom. You can also plot in line and then you don't have to call plt.show. Uh, but I'm just always in the habit of doing it this way. So that's why I'm going to do it. Anyway, boom. There's our performance. Awesome. Looks like we did really well. Turns out you do really well if you can just buy 10 shares of Apple every single day without any r respect to really anything at all. <laughs> and you just have infinite money. Anyway, uh, cool. That did good. Now, you might be like, well, Centex, slow down. How did you know you could do portfolio value? Well, one option was you could probably like look up here and be like, hmm, let's see if portfolio value is even here. <laughs> I've not seen it, but a lot of times I'm just totally blind. It might be there. Anyway, uh, the way I knew about it is what you could say is just now that we've loaded back in that uh, this data frame and called it back to SDF, we can just dot columns this bad boy and boom. So. All of these things are things that we can graph right now. They're automatically tracked except for AAPL. We added that. So, for example, if there's something else that you want to track in your strategy as it goes besides all of these columns right here, if there is something else, just like on Quantopian, you can use the record function and record it. Now, on Quantopian, there's a limit of five, I think. You can only record five things. I'm not positive if Zipline locally is the same. I would have to imagine it's not, but maybe it is. I don't know. I would imagine you could probably record infinite values, though. Um, but I really don't know the answer to that. Someone feel free to comment below if you know the answer. We could just record Apple a bunch. I mean, heck, let's just find it out. Um... <laughs> Sorry for the live test, but I'm actually kind of curious because it's fairly useful if you can record a bunch of things uh, at once. Okay, cool. So that should run pretty quick. Yeah, nice. So you can actually record a lot more. I'm pretty sure the limit on Quantopian is uh, is is five for record. I kind of want to. I just want to confirm that. I'm sorry if you guys aren't really interested. I assume if you're watching this, you probably are at least somewhat interested in this. Recording and plotting variables. 
up to five. Yeah, so Quantopian limits you to five. Zipline doesn't, which is good. That only makes sense. I just want to, just curious if that, that followed through. Um, okay, cool. So anyway, let me run those again before we're, we're dealing with those. So these are all the other columns that you have if you wanted to. When you were going, you could do stuff. You can also just, after the fact, you could make... Um, you can make calculations on this data frame, like you can define a new column and you could say that new column is equal to benchmark period return minus algorithm period return or something like that. You can always do stuff like that or really probably do algorithm period minus benchmark period. But anyway, um, yeah, so like that would be, um, you can make those kind of like after the fact calculations. If you don't know anything about pandas, uh, I'm sure I mentioned this in the Quantopian series, but you can always just Google Panda, or uh, well, you Google Pandas if you want, or you can go to Python Programming Net, just type Pandas up here, and boom, you, you'll find this series. So you just type Pandas, search for that, do the data analysis with Python and Pandas, boom, um, all the all that you could ever want to know about doing stuff with Pandas. So anyway, um, yeah, so that's one way that we can we can graph things. Now the other thing is with uh, doing so like this is one way that we could do visualization, um, but there's another way that we can actually do it. So the other way I just want to show briefly is I think I might even just copy and paste it because this isn't really the way that I like doing it. So I think I'll just copy and paste it from the text-based version. So if you want to do it this way, you can do it. Um, I'll explain why I don't really like it. But basically the only, the only difference is there's an analyze function here. So this is just kind of one of those built-in fun functions that Zipline looks for. So you could run analyze like that and again we're just going to plot portfolio value and then again we could run uh we could run zipline again so i'll just come up where is it <laughs> come up here copy uh paste oh did i run this other i didn't run the other one <laughs> okay hold on uh okay run that one run that one okay hopefully this time it'll work how we expect right so this time rather than having to go to a separate little bid and load back in the 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 uh the pickle. Uh, this time it just all runs at the same time and it outputs our data frame under here if we wanted to. But in the analyze function, anything you put in here, so if you wanted to print out some values, you want to make some graphs, you want to do whatever you wanted to do, uh, you can do that in the analyze function. You could upload your results to some sort of web server. You could anything you want to do in the analyze function, you can do. It's just going to run at the very end. It also still is going to output to strat.pickle. So uh, the reason why I don't really like this is a lot of times when I'm done with a performance, I kind of tinker around with the visualization of that performance. And in this case, every time you wanted to change every little thing, you'd have to run it again. Um, so for me, at least so far, I've actually just been doing it this way where I just output. Um, and actually this is, I'll show you the, the final way um, I typically run things. Um, but yeah, I, I tend to handle the visualization as separate from the actual algorithm itself. But um, everyone's going to probably be a little different there, so I just wanted to show that. So anyways, um, that is interacting now with the output that's created via the performance of your algorithm. So from this point, you should be pretty comfortable doing anything with Zipline using the kind of the, the, the U.S. markets at least via the Quandle bundle that you get from Quantopian. But I think a lot of people are really more interested in using their own data sets. So in the next tutorial, we're going to talk about how you can basically bring in your own data. And then probably it'll be one more tutorial after that. We'll talk about how you could bring in your own data for custom markets too. So anyways, that's what we're going to be doing in the coming tutorials. If you like the content, pythonprogram.net slash support. Questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.